When we finally left Du Bois, we hiked 14 miles out of town, passing Brooks Lake Lodge and some harmful cyanobacteria bloom contaminated water, allegedly. As it got close to dark, we set up our tents in a meadow off to the side of trail. Shortly after leaving camp, Kit and I ran into a dusky grouse. It was making deep vibrations that were hard to capture, but very interesting to listen to. After that, Kit and I parted ways so he could hike a fast day. I spent the morning looking at plants and hiking alone except for passing the occasional sobo, who interestingly told me they'd passed tons of nobos, despite me seeing basically no one. In the afternoon, it started to rain, so I took temporary shelter under some trees. When it began to let up, I walked on, hoping it would stop altogether. It is not nice at all. There's a giant droplet on the camera. That's cute. It's opened up pretty bad a little bit ago. Um, it stopped raining as much as it was. It's a lot lighter, so it's giving me some opportunity to make some miles. For camp, I don't think I'm gonna go as far as we were gonna go because it was up at 10,000 feet. Seemed a little exposed, so I'm gonna check out the campsite that was like three miles from where we were supposed to go. Hopefully that's chill. Seen a lot of horses today. Uh, saw some guys that were section hiking southbound and said that they've seen 15 northbounders today. I was the 15th northbounder they've seen, which just goes to show how weird the trail is because I've not seen anyone going northbound. Like, anyone going the same direction as me since Kid and I left camp this morning and that I last saw him. This would be such a nice swimming hole if it weren't so crappy out. Ugh, I would totally take a dip in that. But I'm already drenched and cold because of this. That's a bummer. The extra stop had put me further behind than I hoped and walking through overgrown willows had wet through my rain gear. Instead of doing a three mile climb in the dark, I messaged Kit on the inReach that I was stopping early and I camped alone. I hung my food and ate dinner with only a curious buck as company. Because of camping early, I had 27 miles until our first permitted campsite in Yellowstone and a three mile climb before meeting up with Kid. The same buck from the night before sent me off for my morning climb. So just like 10 minutes ago, I saw what I think was a black bear cub sprint away from me down this like Super steep hill. Amid my profuse sweating, I scared a bear cub out of the bushes. It vanished before I could even identify what kind of bear it was, but I was extra loud for the rest of my climb. Finally, around 10 a.m., I caught up to Kid and our friend Napoleon. We made it to the ranger station at the border of Yellowstone for lunch and dried out our things while enjoying the luxury of the shaded porch. We still had 15 miles to camp, and I was fairly certain we'd be arriving after dark. We side-hilled along the Snake River all afternoon, observing all sorts of wildflowers and a few more grouse. We dropped down into a meadow and hiked along mostly flat terrain to camp. Despite feeling tired from a long, hot day, the realization that we had walked to Yellowstone, something I had dreamed about for years leading up to the CDT, kept me light on my feet and excited for the days to come. Although our next campsite was only a little over 20 miles away, we woke up early for a full day. It is August 4th, and last night was our first night in Yellowstone National Park. It was our first permitted campsite, um, and we are going to Grant Village today to pick up some packages, hoping the hitch isn't too bad. We've heard it could be pretty brutal because national parks are hard, even though there's a ton of traffic, it's all tourists, and locals are a lot more likely to pick you up in small trail towns than Bob on vacation with his family from Kansas. So. No offense to Kansas. Our first stop was Witch Creek, 
a naturally heated water source that was the perfect temperature for a soak, although probably not great for drinking. On our way to Grant Village, we observed some of our first geothermal features and I enjoyed peering deep into the geysers. We even spotted an animal skeleton at the bottom of one. When we made it to the road, we did not get a ride from a park ranger into Grant Village. A friend who works at the park helped us send packages there, and we picked up a lovely resupply from my mom and my friend Olya before scarfing down three rounds of food from the gift shop. There had been lots of talk that morning of the big sky cutoff from other hikers, and I stressed about if we were going fast enough to finish while I sorted my food for the next week. Kid was confident we were on pace to reach Canada before winter, and I took solace in his confidence. Within my packages was new shoes, and thank goodness, because I'd pushed my last pair almost 700 miles. With new kicks and a quick hitch back to trail, I was ready for the last 10 miles of our day. Ladybug, Monk, and I snacked on wild strawberries from the side of the road, and I hoped they were far enough off of it to escape any roadside contamination. I passed Shoshone Lake alone and crossed the outlet before we were graced with another evening sprinkle. This time though, the rain didn't last long. At camp, we swapped stories and intel with Southbounders and enjoyed dinner next to a fire. We hung our food on pre-built poles, an underrated luxury of permitted backcountry sites. We woke up early to knock out 14 miles to Old Faithful Village before lunch. As soon as I packed up my last piece of gear, it started pouring down rain. It let up, but didn't stop for most of the morning. I felt good though, and grateful to not be soaked through. The highlight of the morning was the Shoshone Geyser Basin, a raw Yellowstone backcountry experience. Geysers lined the trail, and I even had the great privilege of watching some erupt. Signs warned hikers not to step off the well-established path at risk of, essentially, boiling yourself alive. Most people will warn you about bears before heading into the backcountry, but turns out what they should really be warning you about is unstable ground caused by geothermal activity. After dawdling in the geyser basin, I did eventually make it to Old Faithful Village. Popping out of the backcountry into the center villages of national parks can feel a bit like being a peacock at the zoo. You're technically still part of the exhibit, but you're allowed to roam free for some reason, and it's crowded, and everyone is staring at you. Airing out my pruned feet caused a spectacle on the bleachers, but we still enjoyed watching an eruption of Old Faithful before continuing on the boardwalk and then 10 more miles to our last campsite in Yellowstone. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty. With the excitement of Yellowstone, crossing into Idaho, and the somewhat famous Yellowstone murder zone snuck up on us. And so did the 16 mile water carry. No one really talks about it, but the Idaho section of the CDT is actually quite dry. We celebrated briefly at the state line, and then, as we always do, hiked on. I had lunch alone at a barely trickling spring before a downpour that truly dampened the rest of the afternoon. Soaking wet, Napoleon, Kid, and I made it to the campsite Monk, Ladybug, and the Aussies had already reached. After dinner and some planning for town, we turned in for our last night outside on this stretch. We walked just under three miles to the intersection we'd hitched from into West Yellowstone. It took a while, but eventually a nice local picked us up and dropped us at Running Bear Pancake House. There, I had a cinnamon roll that I'm still thinking about to this day. Using a shopping cart we picked up from the local grocery store, we took care of town chores and got ready for a night of relaxation in our Airbnb. Now is when we really need to stay on trail. Like yeah. Watch where you go poop. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. Real. For real though. <laughs> oh, that's nastier than usual. Actually, it's not as nasty as last time. Or it's the same. Well, I got a lot out before you came in here. That's saying something. Mm -hmm. 